Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure and diorama review. Today, my friends at Bandai sent me a few figures and a diorama to review from the Dragon Ball universe, and this is more than I would have ever expected. We've got two figures here, and more importantly, we've got this large temple diorama. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging here. As you can see, the first one is Janemba. He's from the film Dragon Ball Z Fusion Reborn. As you can see, it comes with a bunch of extra hands, a sword, and a tail. The top, Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Stars. At the bottom, Dragon Ball Super. One side, here he is posed up. Not much going on the other side. At the back, you can see figures from Series 17 and Series 18. And there is a barcode, in case that helps anybody. And then we have Super Saiyan Bardock. This is Goku's father. Look at he comes with a couple of extra hands. Dragon Stars. Here he is posed up on the side. Blank on this side. The bottom, Dragon Ball Super. On the back, Series 17 and 18. And there's his barcode. And then, of course, the item I was most excited for. This is the World Martial Arts Tournament Temple. This thing looks to be large. We got Goku and Piccolo on the top, Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Stars World. One side, you can just see the temple. Other side, pretty much same thing. At the bottom, bunch of credits, and there's a barcode in case that helps anybody. And then on the back, you can see a bunch of different action features from the temple. A couple figures on it, and then my word, look at that checklist. So with no further ado, let's open them up. All right, now that we have these figures and diorama out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. Bardock here comes with two alternate hands totaling four interchangeable hands, and Janemba here comes with four alternate hands totaling six hands and a sword. Looks like we have quite a bit of assembly to do with the martial arts tournament temple. I am looking forward to putting that thing together. Looks like it's going to be sick. Once we have that put together, we'll take a look at each of the figures individually. We'll look at their accessories, height, and articulation. Then we'll look at the diorama. We'll check out some different action figure lines from various companies with both the diorama and the figures. That way you can know which different lines are going to work with this diorama and which different lines are going to scale up good with the Dragon Ball figures. So, let's start off with assembling the diorama. So here are all the pieces of the diorama laid out. Looks like it's going to have some cool action features. I really like the detailing on it. it. does seem like it's going to be a little bit small for the figures, but should be a great background piece. Now it did come with an instruction sheet. This is an inventory of everything it should come with, and then it's going to have assembly instructions. So let's go ahead and get started. So step one of the instructions is going to take this back piece here, and you're going to attach these three smaller pieces. Looks like it's pretty simple and self-explanatory. This piece is simply going to slide into here. And the same with the other two pieces are going to slide into the two slots. Here are those pieces attached. Now on to step two. Next, we'll take these rooftop awning pieces. They're going to attach via these rectangles in the back into these rectangle slots here. Seems like some pretty easy assembly. And here's how it looks now. It's starting to get a little bit top heavy and it won't stand up on its own until I attach the base. And the next piece to attach is going to be this sign here. It's going to attach with this hole here attaching to the awning up top. And here's how it looks at this point. Now we'll attach this base piece to the bottom. It has some little rectangles back here. They're going to attach to these rectangles here. This is what we've got so far. Definitely starting to take some shape. Now I'll take these three broken pieces of the wall and attach them up top here. And here's how the front part looks now. I assume this is a breakaway action feature for the diorama. Now we'll attach this sign to the center here. And it'll look about like this. Now to attach these two pieces together, this wall here with the building in the back, at this point, it should look like this. 
looking fantastic if you ask me. Now we'll attach this front floor piece. Simply going to attach at the base over here. And it'll look like this now. We are almost finished. And the last piece to attach, we've got these two interchangeable ground pieces to plug in that hole. One is completely intact, and one is a giant crater for some battle damage. Here it is with the intact floor. And here it is with the battle damage crater. And there you have it. Here's this thing fully assembled. I think it looks pretty cool, although it's a little bit underscaled for the figures. Now let's check out the measurements of this thing. As far as how wide it is, sitting at about 15 inches wide. As far as how deep it is, sitting at about 11.5 inches deep. And then how tall it is to the tallest point here, about 12 inches tall. Now let's check out the action features on this diorama. It really only has one action feature, and that's to take battle damage, but it can do that in a few different places. So first of all, you've got this front wall here. This part breaks away. You could have one of your figures get punched or thrown into the wall and lay in some rubble, and that'll look about like so. And as you decide to break away this wall, there are numerous different options. Here it is intact, and here it is with the first piece removed, and then the second, and then the third piece removed. A lot of different levels of damage you can show. We've also got this sign on top of the building. It can be straight like this, and it can also be crooked like this, as if it's falling over. Then we have the concrete floor. Here it is completely flat and level, undamaged. And here's the huge hole in the concrete, as if one of the characters threw another one so hard into the ground that they broke it. Here's a set completely intact and undamaged. And here it is with all the different levels of damage. Now let's look at Bardock. This is Goku's father. As you can see, he's got that gold or blonde hair. You can tell he's a Super Saiyan. His face looks kind of mean. Got a little mark or scar on his cheek. Red bandana. You can see it sticking out the back. Going further down, he's got a little bit of an armored look to him. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. Overall, pretty cool looking figure. And here he is, broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removal parts detached. Now let's look at his accessories. He has two pairs of hands. Here he is, with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. And here's his next pair of hands. These are some open hands. I would describe them as some grabbing or throwing hands. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to top, He's sitting at about 6.6 .6 inches tall, which is going to translate to a hair under 17 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation, starting with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side. You can look up and down just a little bit there. Can't tilt or really do much else. Shoulders, not a ball joint, it's a peg that goes into the shoulder. Goes out this far, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got a bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows, but they only go in this far. His wrists can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. His torso is one solid piece. He does have a waist swivel at the bottom here. Legs, they go out about this far. They're obstructed from his armor on the side. They are ball joint. They can go forward about that far, back about that far. They can rotate against the ball there. Double jointed knees go back about that far. Then his ankle here, of course you can go up and down, it can rotate around, and if you want to tilt it, you can sort of adjust the ball inside there, and then tilt his leg, ankle. Now let's check out Janemba. He's got six hands and a sword. You can see he's got that armored look to him. The pink armor, the sort of orange skin, very lizard-like. Large horns on the top, he's got the yellow eyes, pointy ears, looks like Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. His tail has a couple points of articulation at the back there. Really liking the way he looks. Pretty cool, pretty unique. And here he is, broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removal parts detached. Now let's take a look at his accessories. 
And let's start off with his hands. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. And here he is with his second pair of hands. These are a couple of gripping hands. They should be able to hold a sword. And here's his third pair of hands. These are some open hands. I would describe them as some grabbing or throbbing hands. Now let's look at his sword. This thing has a red blade, purple in the middle, and then a white handle. Mine is severely warped for the packaging. I'll try to heat it up and see if I can correct that. So I went ahead and boiled some water, dip the sword in there, strain it out and let it cool down. And now it's straight like it's supposed to be. Here he is holding onto the sword. And now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's sitting at about 6.4 inches tall, which is going to translate to a little bit over 16 centimeters. And if you go to the top of his horns, about 7 inches tall. Now let's check out his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, it can rotate from side to side. can look up and down just a little bit there. Can't really do much else. Shoulders. Not exactly a ball joint, it's got a peg going in there. Goes out about 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows below that, but they can only go up about 90 degrees. His wrist can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. Torso seems to be a solid piece up here. He's got a swivel down here. It's a ball joint to go forward and back, but just the tiniest bit. Legs really don't go out much. They are on ball joints. You can kind of see inside there. Go forward about that far. Back pretty much as far as you want. And then they can rotate against the ball. Double jointed knees. They go back that far. Then his ankle. You can go up and down just a little bit. It can rotate around. And it can tilt a little bit as well. Then we've got his tail. It does have a cut in the middle here. It's got a ball joint at the base. You can rotate around. And then it has a hinge down here as well. So pretty good range of motion for his tail. Here are the two of them fighting in the martial arts tournament, even though they never actually encountered each other. Here's Bardock kicking Janemba. He kicked him so hard, he ended up breaking the wall and knocking the sign down. But Bardock's not done, decides to pick him up and slam him into the ground. And Bardock is now standing victorious over Janenba. Now let's check him out next to some other action figures. So you can see how they fit in both scale and style wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix them with. And then you can also see how some of the other lines will fit in with this martial arts tournament temple. It is a little bit undersized for these figures, and it will be for some other figures but you can see if it's going to be a nice background piece or not for them. Here they are, next to some of their Bandai brothers. Here they are with some of their anime figures. These are some Saint Saiyan figures. And here they are with a couple more of their Bandai brothers. These are some SH figure arts action figures. And here they are, next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are, Next to some Mafex figures. Then with some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse figures. And here they are, next to some Mezco, 112th Cloth Soft Goods action figures. Then with some Mattel wrestling figures. And here, with some NECA figures. Then with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here they are, with some McFarlane toys. And finally, Next is some DST or Diamond Select toys. So overall, these figures are pretty cool, but the diorama is even better. That is definitely the standout piece from this lot. I really like the detail in this thing. Nice texturing, good paint job. I like the action features. Even though this diorama is a little bit too small for the figures, it's going to be a great background piece for them. It is a must-have for any Dragon Ball fan. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure and diorama reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. 
Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.